Last summer, I binge-watched Netflix series Orange is the New Black, which was inspired by Piper Kerman's memoir of the same title. I wanted to see how closely the TV show followed the actual storyline of the memoir. I also wanted to see if I could find out what was going to happen in the next TV series, which is released completely in July, but won't be back until spring of next year. And here's what I found out. If you're not into Orange is the New Black, as in the TV series, you can still enjoy the book, where the TV series has become a hit for the backstories of the prison inmates that Piper Kerman meets while serving her 13-month sentence in federal prison, and the love affair between Piper and her ex-girlfriend Alex. The book is solely about Piper and what it was like for this reformed free spirit to be caged in a year at Danbury, Connecticut. Piper Kerman grew up like most of us in the Summit area. She came from a good family, went to a notable college, and then went out into the world to find herself. What she ended up finding was a world of trouble masked by the glitz and excitement of her new girlfriend. Piper met Nora, a heroin trafficker, and fell hard. She quickly became involved in a romantic relationship with Nora where she enjoyed the benefits that drug dealing money can provide, like a high-end hotel in an exotic locale, interesting people, the thrill of doing something wrong without having to see any of the consequences. After being together for about a year, Nora asked Piper to pick up a suitcase full of money and, from an airport and bring it back to a hotel for her. This was the first and only time Piper was directly involved in the drug trade. But fast forward over 10 years later, and it has landed her in federal prison. Kerman shares her experiences in telling her fiancé what happened, her parents, and her future in-laws, that she was being indicted for a federal crime. She tells us how hard it was to live her normal life while waiting over a year for sentencing. Once she was sentenced, she expressed a huge sense of relief at being sent to Danbury, Connecticut, which was a commutable distance from her family in New York and Massachusetts. While in prison, Piper donned her new orange jumpsuit and joins the rest of the Danbury inmates. Prison seems to be an experience that leaves you to become a shell of your former self. Other than the orange jumpsuit, a sleeping gown, granny panties, shoes, and a jacket, inmates are expected to provide for themselves while in jail. You need a toothbrush? You need shampoo? You need soap? Well, you better hope that one of your family members deposited money into your commissary account. Otherwise, you have to rely on the kindness of your fellow inmates. While in jail, Piper deals with her feelings and speculates on the feelings of the other women in jail. In jail, it's a faux pas to ask what your fellow inmate is incarcerated for, but you do share other things with each other, some because you want to, others because you're forced to. The book tells stories of pregnant women who are in labor for over 24 hours before they're brought to a hospital, only to be brought back the next day postpartum with no baby. These women were deeply depressed, and the only help they could receive was this medication. In prison, you're not allowed to touch, so even an attempt to comfort a fellow inmate by touching their arm or giving them a hug could throw an inmate into solitary confinement. Although the book does delve into the power plays between guards and prisoners, yes, it does go both ways, I was struck most by how ineffective the prison system really is. The point of prison, at least in my limited means of knowing, is to rehabilitate a person so they can enter back into society as a more productive person. When I read about what the release process was, I was stunned. The inmates, some of whom have been in jail for over 20 years or more, are not given information on how to apply for affordable housing, how to get food stamps or Medicaid. They're not given much education past maybe a GED. And when they leave prison, they get $30 and they're dropped off at a bus or train stop. No wonder so many prisoners end up back in jail. Piper was lucky. She had a supportive family, a supportive partner, and a job waiting for her when she got out. For the majority of these incarcerated women, this is not the case. I found the book to be riveting. Even though I'd never broken the law, well, past the level of maybe a speeding ticket, I could see myself with those women. Most of the women made silly mistakes and were serving short sentences, but now they're forever marked with a prison record. Two of the most memorable parts of the book for me were when Piper was dealing with knowing her grandmother, who she was very close with, was dying and she was never going to be able to see her again. And the other part that was interesting to me was when two inmates who were recently transferred to Danbury stood in the rain reveling in the feeling of the water on their skin, something they hadn't experienced in four years when they were at their former prison. If you love the TV series, you'll find that the book only takes a small idea here and there from Kerman's memoir to formulate their storyline. So don't worry, reading the memoir will not spoil the series for you. 
If you don't care about the TV series, you'll enjoy the book as it highlights what it's like to be a female prisoner in the federal system. It's a relatively fast read and some libraries have it an audiobook available, so maybe you'd like to give that a go. Make sure you tune in next month to Lee's Library List where I'll be reading a book of poetry by Michael Motlock called Cool Limbo. That's what's on my library list. Happy reading.